in this screencast is how I use the blogs tool in Blackboard. I use it in both the 100 and the 300 level uh, for English 100 and English 300 and um, I'll, I want to show you the 100 level first. So just FYI we are in the instructor view for this particular screencast so um, you'll see what, what you would see rather than what students would see. So if you click on blogs they're also enabled in the, the weekly modules that you see above. Um, these are all of the blogs that they have, so I do use the blog as an introduction to encourage them to post a few pictures um, and, and get themselves acquainted with one another. Um, and then I use it in several different um, formats. They have it available in their peer review sessions, particularly for their informative essays so they can share articles if need be. Um, but in 100, students use uh, the blog feature to share articles, information, um, and, and to work through activities that, are, that help them interact with course content. So it's always relevant to the assignment or relevant to creating kind of a, a group cohesion. It's always geared towards the the student to student communication. I will comment on their blogs, um, but a lot less than I will comment on a discussion board. Um, they're they're a little less. Um, I don't want to say labor intensive for instructors, but usually the students seem to take over um, because they're usually posting visuals and written content or videos and written content so it tends to be more interactive and, and definitely works to get them more social with one another and more engaged. So uh, the first example I will show you guys and I should have um, actually I have a student up here um, <sighs> overachieving student already has one posted it's not due yet. Uh, so the information please uh, blog is is to help students kind of interact with the material for their informative APA format uh, research paper. So students have to find an article that is engaging, that is scholarly, that is um, in some way relevant uh, to to their research and I do let them pull a little bit from um, popular sources for this particular article, um, for this particular blog, just so that it is introducing people to the topic in a way that is approachable. We then work to get into the more scholarly, peer-reviewed, heavy-duty stuff. Um, so you can read the example of what the description is here of, of what they're doing. Generally speaking, the students will, will post an article that is from Science News Daily or, or a source like that and give a, a short description of it. Uh, why they're interested in it, and then there's a little bit of a back and forth uh, with the commenting features on the blog. The second example that I wanted to show you is actually a lot more fun. Um, I love this assignment and the students seem to really relate to it well. So for this one I have a sample um, blog. This is for the cultural criticism paper, which is an argumentative paper and we get into discussing fallacies. So this blog assignment, students have to find a visual representation of a fallacy and then deconstruct it. So they're basically doing a, an argument analysis. So the fun thing about this is that students get to find these ridiculous visuals um, of, of advertising fallacies and they're out there and they're you know, as ridiculously funny as, as they are depressing. So it's a real eye-opener to how fallacies can be manipulative and, and how students can, um, well, how, why students want to avoid them. So we have a, a paragraph down here that gives an example of, of what the fallacy is, how it um, works in the argument, and then a deconstruction of how it weakens the argument. Students then get to comment on each other's um, blog postings for these as well. So in English 300 I actually use um, blogs a little bit differently. It's still geared towards interaction and it's still geared towards uh, interaction with you know peer-to-peer -peer interaction but also content but we get a little more heavy-duty here. Um, in English 300 the focus for students in the course in general is to help them find their voices as professionals. So in this regard I tend to use the blog for professional development um, more so than interacting directly with 
assignment-based work. So each week the students have to find an article that is either scholarly or, or from a professional organization. Try to really encourage the professional organization um, so that students learn to, to stay current in their field and to stay involved in, in their profession. And then each week students have to um, take this article, hopefully post a, a URL or a PDF of the article, um, give a summary of it, APA format, um, citation, and then also uh, why it's relevant to their profession. You can see the assignment here. So students will go in and, and post this. And again, this is actually more so than in 100. We see a lot of student interaction where they read each other's um, summaries or they even go and read each other's articles um, and, and get involved in professional organizations and professional publications. And then also in learning more from their peers about what their uh, professions are, how many options they have in their career. It's, it's kind of cool to watch, honestly. So this is how I use blogs. I hope it was helpful.